The sex escalator. Should you be on it or off it? I'm Darshana Avila, your guide to all things erotic wholeness, and as always, delighted to be here chatting about sex, intimacy, relationships, pleasure, and all the things that contribute to us thriving in those aspects of our lives. So the sex escalator is the idea that once we begin to engage physically, sensually, maybe it's holding hands, maybe it's a makeout, something like that, that this action is going to automatically lead to sexual intercourse. I work with a lot of women and something that I hear constantly, and I really mean that <laughs> constantly, particularly from women who are in partnership, is that the moment that they begin to engage sensually with their partner, there is a sense of pressure that that is automatically going to have to, have to, have to, have to lead to sexual intercourse. And it's this feeling, it's this dread, it's this pressure, it's this expectation that can stop many of us who would otherwise really like to be exploring our erotic selves and being sensual and playful. It can stop many of us from even wanting to begin those explorations because there is a pressure to escalate to a point that may or may not be the thing we want to do in this moment. So I really want to invite you to think about the sex escalator as a concept. And whether you are coming from the vantage point of somebody who feels like you are being forced onto the sex escalator, or honestly, if you're somebody who is forcing your partner, even if unconsciously or subconsciously, this is an invitation to really consider what are the implicit expectations that are going on anytime you and a lover or a partner come together? And how can you make some adjustments that might take some of the pressure off and instead open up a lot of spacious possibility for you to engage in ways that can be mutually desirable, that can feel really spacious and relaxed, because I can tell you this, nothing is hotter than relaxed arousal. When we come in with a sense of feeling at ease and safe, we don't feel like there's any kind of expectation about where we need to go, that field of permission and that relaxation is really the thing that then lets us feel emboldened and empowered to start to get more creative and more expressive. So again, pressure off, possibility on. You step off that sex escalator with the idea that the moment something physical happens, it has to lead to intercourse. And instead, what you get to replace it with is a lot of creativity and curiosity about how you can explore erotically, how you can be sensual together. What might happen if you spend your time in a slow, deep makeout? Perhaps what you really want to focus on is using your hands and how you can give and or receive pleasure with your hands, with your mouth. It doesn't always need to lead to genital and genital contact. Understanding that many of us feel pressured to perform in a certain way and that there is a script we're being asked to follow, uh, an end goal that we're being forced to meet, and the kind of inner pressure that that can put on us. Understanding that as a concept, being aware of it, and then being more sensitive as a lover or partner to your own self and to who you're engaging with. Again, this is what's going to really start to take that pressure off and allow for greater ease, greater trust, greater sense of safety. Now, the thing is this, sometimes, sure, like when we are really turned on and it's all hot and bothered and that energy is there to want to dive deep and know that we're leading toward intercourse, there's nothing wrong with following that energy, not in the least. The thing that I want to bring to your awareness is that it's very common, especially in established couples, long-term partnerships and such, um, it's common that not both people want the exact same thing at the exact same time. And so when there is this implicit expectation that any kind of sensual touch, any kind of gesture or overture is going to automatically lead to intercourse, it causes us to then withhold affection. It causes that shutting down, that bracing and armoring, that mm, no, don't go there kind of energy. When in reality, what I know to be true for many of the people that I support, 
again, very common with women, although it's not exclusively gendered, is that they feel the bind of wanting to be affectionate, wanting to be cuddly and playful, to have makeouts and massages and, and just enjoy some playfulness with their partners, but they find themselves without even wanting to, without even intending to, armoring up against even a slight gesture in that direction for fear that the pressure is going to quickly mount from the sex escalator. So my advice to you here is to become aware of how you might be enforcing those expectations. Again, it could be very unconscious and unintentional, but it's there nonetheless. If you are somebody who is enforcing that, or if you are someone who feels like you are being forced into that, First and foremost, bringing it to your awareness and then adapting, saying, hey, tonight, let's just make out. Tonight, let's just focus on massage. Tonight, let's explore each other's bodies with our mouths and our hands, but take intercourse off the table just to see what it's like. Over time, when there is a sense of trust that the sex escalator is no longer the norm in the dynamic, you'd be amazed what that relaxation and that possibility opens up for you. So go ahead, give it a try. And as always, please leave comments. Let me know how that goes for you. I love hearing and engaging with how your lived experiences are. And be sure that you subscribe here for more information so you don't miss any of these good nuggets of erotic wholeness. I will see you soon. Bye.